Hello everybody and welcome to reading vlog number five I want to say. Today is Monday the 23rd of July and I have finally started my buddy read with Mara from Books Like Whoa of The Passage by Justin Cronin. I'm on page 10 so I can't exactly tell you loads about this book but I thought I'd shoot a quick introduction to get this vlog going. Uh, I've not been sleeping well again. I got up at like 4pm today which is a bit of a bummer. So I'll probably be up all night and hopefully all day tomorrow to try and reset my sleeping and catch up on a little bit of work. So there is that. Uh, what else is new? I have an update for October. In October I'm going to, uh, my dad has a like an apartment out in Spain and he needs some help doing some building work over there. So I'm basically getting a free trip to Spain in exchange for helping him to do some of this work. So that'll be in October and I will obviously vlog that and hopefully I'll get to see some sights while I'm there and also obviously I'll take some books and do some reading. Oh and the other news is is that Driven, my book, my detective novel, has been is received an offer from a small publisher. So hopefully that will be uh, like republished through this publisher soon. I don't know how much I can say at the moment though, so I'm, I'm not gonna keep talking. But yeah, it is um, 25 to five and uh, I need to crack on with work really. So I'm gonna go and do that and read a little bit more of The Passage. Let's do this. Someone's struggling with the heat a bit, I think, aren't they, Biggie? Oh, Biggie boy. Big -y boy. Look at that little tail swish, though. He knows I'm talking to him. What is it? What is it? Is it an ice cube? Oh. Biggie's just sitting like a little human. Sometimes he likes to sit like this, don't you, Biggie? I am watching PewDiePie. But I have also watched some booktube. And I have read part of <laughs> The Passage. Yes, I've made a dent. Hello, uh, it is Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday because it's Tag Tuesday. A little cord that is supposed to go around my wrist from the camera is dangling down. I should probably have that around my wrist so that if I drop it, it doesn't land on my face. Like, uh, oh! Update time. I have been reading some more of The Passage by Justin Cronin. I'm now about 110 pages in. I'm quite enjoying it, I must say. It's weird because I'm looking at it and I'm like, I haven't found a huge amount that I will actually want to say about it. But I am enjoying it as it like as it kind of washes over me, I guess. It reminds me a bit of the stand in terms of it's like how epic it is. Um, I like the way that it, it similarly to the stand as well, there are different characters coming at us from different points. Uh, and so I'm assuming they're all gonna, you know, they're all gonna meet up at some point and it's all gonna come together. There was a scene that I thought was really well written where um, this kid goes outside um, was this a kid called Grey and he goes outside in the snow because he's really excited because he's like we never get snow in Texas and then he sees something red on the car windscreen and uh, he finds that his father shot himself in the head which is quite sad but um, really well written I thought though we had a reference to the Princess Bride which I enjoyed and um, we also had a reference to the story's title itself I guess during this email trail and by the way I usually I usually don't like it when email trails are used in books. I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't particularly get on with Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda. I don't know, the, the meth, you know, just the act of using emails inside a book just annoys me a little bit. But anyway, the, he did it here. I'll let him get away with it. But um, there was this quote, what strange places our lives can carry us to, what dark passages, which is presumably a reference to the title of the novel. But yes, I'm enjoying it. I will continue to read it. I can't imagine that I'll DNF it at this point either. So I'm just excited to see what's going on. And uh, the other thing, the other news is that I have this big old parcel here. I, uh, I bought a laptop computer because, uh, well, because I, because I think I mentioned in this video, because I'm going to be going to uh, Spain with my dad for like 10 days or something, but I'll still need to work while I'm out there. But also, 
I mean, I do have a laptop, it's an old one, it's crap, and like, I just don't use it, I just use my desktop all the time. So the hope is now that I have this laptop, I can actually go out and, uh, you know, do some work in a coffee shop or something like that. Drink some soy lattes, so yeah. Alright, and this evening I'm going to be cooking spaghetti bolognese, but uh, vegan style. So we're going to use mushrooms, it be exciting. Alright, peace. So I do this thing where I put my clothes on the floor down there when I'm ready to have a shower, and every time I do it, a cat comes out of nowhere and sits on them, so I can't shower. Biggie, why do you want me to be smelly? You're not even listening, are you? Biggie! Biggie, I see you're now keeping my books warm. You switch from my clothes to my books. Okay. So Becca's lying on the sofa, watching Greatest Interiors or whatever. And I... am over here in the kitchen, making dinner. So I'm making spaghetti bolognese, that's a red wine sauce. Here we have, uh, this is like minced mushrooms. Pasta there in the background, this is what it's meant to look like. Yeah, anyone want some red wine? Red wine, anyone? Going, going, gone. I literally made enough spaghetti bolognese to feed a small army. This is a wokful. I can hardly lift that up with my hand. Oh, it does say serves, serves sit four to six. And this is for me and Becca, but we'll continue eating it, so that's fine. It looks good though, I'm excited. Right, the final result. And Becca wants to know why there is wine in a measuring cup. Because we don't have any wine glasses. Hello, it is uh, Wednesday. I was actually going to film a video, so I have my lights up. But um, I'm on low battery, so I need to charge my, my uh, camera's battery. So in the meantime, I thought I'd give you a super quick update for as long as this battery will last. I am on page 271 of uh, the passage. I've just got to part two, the year of zero or whatever. Um, it's all right, it's reminding me of The Stand by Stephen King. It's, it's a poor man's version of The Stand. I do still feel as though I have no interest in reading after this book. Not, not that I'm not enjoying it, I am enjoying it. I just don't know whether I want to commit to, you know, two more books this size just to see what happens to these characters because I'm I'm not that bothered about them. I'm more interested in the storyline. It has just started getting interesting though. A lot of people are getting ripped apart and stuff. In a little bit, I'm going to fill, film a review of To Kill a Mockingbird because I read this, you know, during my reading vlog recently. This is for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. Biggie is on the floor down there. Look at him. <laughs> um, I also, I've spent some time, I've been setting up my laptop, so that's all sorted now. I've stayed up all night, unfortunately, but it's kind of a good thing. My current plan is to stay up till about 10, 11 p.m. this evening, go to sleep, and then try to get back into a normal sleeping pattern. I'm thinking about getting, like, an extra loud alarm clock, or one of those ones where if you, if you press the snooze button, it donates money to a political party you hate. I quite like the idea of that. It might make me actually get up. But I also don't want to have to end up donating to UKIP, you know? Um, I think that's about it for now. What else is new? I've got some rainbow nerds. I think these are vegan friendly. As far as I can tell they are. Uh, I mean, it does have allergy advice, may contain egg, but they usually put that on when it's produced in a factory that also handles egg. The only thing I'm not entirely sure about is actually stuff like the colours. Like, it just has like... E129, E110, E132, and some E numbers aren't vegan. Which is ridiculous, you'd think they would put that on packets if it contained like, you know, crushed up beetles or something, but no. So I'm listening to psychedelic music with an accompanying psychedelic uh, video. Uh, this is actually the Brian Jonestown Massacre, or Anton Newcomb, who is their lead singer, and a song called Transendiren, I guess. He uh, creates, he's a like fairly well-known rock musician, but he creates his own original songs and puts them up on YouTube, which I think is pretty cool. But uh, I've just used an app called Push Doctor, which I've used before, it's to get hold of my antidepressants. It was very cool though, look, so it's all done over the phone. It was actually this, I've done it over a phone call in the past, but this was entirely over a text chat. And um, yeah, it finds a nearby pharmacy for me, checks that the, the uh, medication's in stock, sends a prescription to them and then I go and pick it up. Basically I'm in the process of switching doctors at the moment because my current doctor, they only give me four weeks worth of medication at a, uh, in a go and they have a six week waiting list for appointments. So 
I can't, you know, I can't get my medication from them in time, basically. I can get my four weeks of medication, but even if I book an appointment the second I have my previous appointment, I'm still off my medication for two weeks before I can get it again. So basically, I'm just using this service which allows me to go private with it, basically. So I can go and pick up my medication later. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to crack on with doing some writing. I am writing for a client three articles, so I've just written read a thousand words on top five digital transformation trends of 2018 so now i'm doing top five ai trends of 2018 and then i've got top five blockchain trends of 2018 as well so i'm gonna just crack on with those articles really and see how much i can get it done i can pretty much take it easy today because i worked all night so i'm a little bit ahead of things but uh you know, I like to be as ahead as possible because then I can earn myself days off in a loo. It's time to open the jackfruit. The back, Let's try the this. The We've got an experimental angle on the camera here. The tripod is literally in the sink. She's got this fabulous fan shape. You smell of anything. Kind of shard like leaves. Now, Carol, so, so I'm using lots of we're going to drain the jackfruit. For example, I've got this basin, Hey Biggie, I'm that's cooking that's with jackfruit. I know it's time to see me. I know it has to be done first. And Becca's playing Crash Bandicoot. No. As far as you are concerned, no, but it rhymed if I said that. Kitchen day in here. Here is the jackfruit. That's what it looks like. Alright, drain excess water. Alright, pat the pieces down with a clean tea towel to dry them off. We don't have clean tea towels. I made me slices, I'm going to turn the camera off for a bit now. Alright, we're getting somewhere now, so these are the taco shells. I've just put the oven on to preheat. I've been lazy and not actually waited for it, but whatever. Whack those in, a little bit just to warm them up. Here we have here the jackfruit, it's in vegetable stock, it's just sizzling away. And I've actually made this sort of spice mix here in the pestle and mortar. Let's put the spices in, shall we? I mean, it looks seasoned, I guess. All right, I have to prep the final, final way of serving what oh, whatever it is complete i think i have never tried jackfruit i'm going to try a bit and see what it tastes like now the genius of this as well people of youtube is that i also still have a lot of homemade guacamole and salsa left to make nachos with so here we have salsa homemade homemade guacamole pepper and himalayan rock salt we have coriander over there and lime quarters, so you can squeeze the juice of the limes in. Here we have our jackfruit and here we have our tacos. Thank here you, we go. The final taco with layers of stuff. Turning this wide, uninspiring experiment. Yeah. Do you like using my guitar case as a bed, do you? Hey? Do you never feel ground down by the responsibility? All right, I'm gonna play guitar now. I sang him to sleep. Didn't I, Biggie? I sang you, cat. Oh, you heard that. Why is it so zoomed on my face? Come on, Biggie. What's in the box? What's in the box? Could have a little look, Biggs. No. But you like boxes. Biggie. Oh, who's a good kitty cat? You a good kitty cat. Floppy, floppy. So, it is uh, Thursday. So, basically what happened, I tried to fix my sleeping pattern by staying up all night on Tuesday night, and then I went to bed about midnight yesterday, after I'd been awake for like 30 hours. Hoping that I'd wake up at about 9 a.m. today. I didn't I woke up at 4 p.m. So I accidentally had 
16 hours of sleep so that's not good um, I don't know I'm really at this point I'm starting to think I need to see a professional but every time I mention it to my doctor they just advise me to read more and drink chamomile tea I'm like that, that doesn't work I've tried all the things this has been a problem for 10 plus years of my life mate Becca got an artist to do an illustration of Biggie and we finally had it framed so there we go it's pretty good isn't it it's pretty accurate Shout out to Betty Lou Nil, or Noll, I think she's called. Uh, I've been reading more of the passage. I am currently at page 360. Uh, I don't know, I'm losing interest a little bit because I, I'm just not, I'm not that into the characters. Like, the world building is pretty good, but I, I don't care what happens to the characters. And at this point, with like 600 odd pages to go, that's kind of a worry. But, um, I mean, I'm going to still keep reading it. I do, it is still, it's just a poor man's version of The Stand by Stephen King. But at a length like this, I could just reread The Stand. In fact, I'm going to reread The Stand in December. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel. I still don't think I'm likely to, to read the next book in that series. I just wanted to show you, uh, Becca accidentally broke our blender. And we need, we need the blender for, like, every vegan meal we do. So, we've got a new blender. Look at that beauty. And it has an auto clean button. So hopefully it'll clean itself and Becca won't have to do it all the time because she gets annoyed about that because I make a lot of mess when I'm cooking. All right, oh, and I've got to do some booktube videos later. So down here we have some books. I'm gonna do Why I Became Vegan, which is why we have some animal books there. Uh, my next set of buddy reads that I wanna do. And also I have a package there, which I should be very careful of because I am sending that package to Anthony Andrews. But um, I don't want to accidentally share his address. Dark Somebody likes to sit on plastic carrier bag things, don't they, Biggie? Oh, he did the slow blink. I'm currently watching Reckless Eating. They do like food reviews and stuff. So, and food challenges. But I am now about to set myself up. In fact, let's give you a bit of the behind the scenes. Here we go. Camera on the tripod. Got roughly the right angle. Probably need to need to move this slightly. Hide the dodgy kitchen. Turn the lighting on. Oh. Plug in the snowball. Oh, it's already plugged in. Ideal. So I just put this on its tripod and then drop it down in front of the microphone like that. And then I'm ready to film, so I'm gonna go and film now. I've decided to do a slightly different thing. I'm gonna talk about why I'm not doing Booktubeathon, but it's not clickbaity or negative. It's just my personal decision of why I don't want to. So we have a new blender, because somebody broke the old one. I don't know who. How do you get it out? Oh, you just lift it, it's heavy. So here we go, vegan nachos with vegan nacho sauce that's made out of nutritional yeast and cashews and a bit of lime and some other bits. I have jalapenos on mine, guacamole and salsa. Those are both homemade from yesterday's meal from the tacos. Becca's one doesn't have jalapenos in. Yeah. Yeah. And we're watching something about gardening. Guess what's going on over here? Someone's just had a wash. Haven't they, Biggs? Who's had a wash? He has very dry and itchy skin. Biggie boy. And the vet said it would help. Watch out, she's gonna get you. So, oh yes, actually that's quite wet cat. You're gonna find something of mine to sit on, are you? Oh, I made my own hummus. I think he's literally sitting there in case that starts to move and he can attack it. What'd you say, Biggs? Hello. You comfy down there? Boo, 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 boo. Good boy. He's found an even better place. 
And we're watching PewDiePie, aren't we, Biggie? While I write about, I'm doing web copy for a client. Uh, this is about, they are a piano tuning and repair company, aren't they, Biggie? Yes, they are. Yes, they are, and I've got to write their web copy. Yes. Is I think like the original American edition, which cut out the last chapter. Uh, my other edition did have the last chapter, which was the Aurora Dimitri. I accidentally just froze her in a really unflattering uh, still. The uh, light quality might look a bit different today because there's like all this tension in the air. You know, before you have a storm and you get all this tension, and you're like, something's about to happen here. We've got that kind of vibe going on in Wickham today. I think it has actually just rained very slightly. Hey, Biggie! Look at him! Should we... You gonna let me sit down here, Biggie? Biggie and I are here. Uh, I've been reading some more of the passage. I'm on page 472. This little folded page here, by the way, just happened while I was filming. I don't fold my pages to tell where I am. Sometimes I leave my books, like I've left this just flat like that to rem remember where I am. In terms of like the sticky notes I've been putting down, I haven't really read anything in the last 200 pages that's been worth tabbing. And even the stuff that I have tabbed has mostly been references to stuff that I like, like a mention of Graham Greene or, you know, a book here and there that I happen to have read or whatever. So, um, I don't know, my opinion of this book is rapidly going downhill. I know I compared it to The Stand earlier, and now I feel like that's a bad comparison because The Stand was really good and is one of my favourite books. And this is just dull. I don't care at all about any of the characters. Do I, Biggie? Oh no! Where are you going? Where are you? Yeah, I don't really care about any of the characters. The plot is very slow. At the moment it feels like nothing is happening. I don't even know where in time we are now because I think it jumped into the future but maybe I wasn't paying attention when that bit happened or maybe it just wasn't made clear I don't know so I haven't so I have no idea what like what kind of time we're meant to be in how long we are after this outbreak or whatever for a book that's basically got like plagues and vampires and shit in it's really dull it's so boring Oh man, if I wasn't already this far in, I probably would have given up on this book and DNF'd it, but now I'm like, I might as well plow on. Mara from Books Like Woe has finished. She said it gets better near the end, but it does suffer during the middle. The problem is, is I wasn't particularly enjoying the start either. It's just then the middle got worse. So at the moment, this is like a three out of five for me. Maybe it'll pick up towards the end. I don't know, all the way through I've been kind of thinking it's going to get like 3.5 out of 5, maybe a 4 if it's good. But at the moment it's a 3, so... So yeah, not very excited to continue reading it to be honest. Especially because it's like, this will take me all week, I'll probably, I'm, I kind of want to finish this by the weekend, but um... I mean, my bedtime book, which is Richard Dawkins, uh, which one am I reading? I can't even remember. Uh, I'm reading The Blind Watchmaker, that's it, and uh, it's all about evolution and science and stuff, and I'm like, this is way more interesting than The Passage, and I specifically put that as my bedtime book, because I thought, oh, it might be kind of dull and kind of slow going, I don't want to, I don't want to read it during the day and for it to put me into a reading slump or a book hangover or whatever it is that people have these days, and, um, yeah, I would quite happily swap these out and read this one as my bedside book, but maybe I could actually. Maybe I could. It's a thought, innit? I guess I'll let you know in my next reading vlog update whether I decided to do that or not. Holy cow, the apocalypse is here, but I'm gonna go and stand in it because it's boiling still as well. Maybe not the and best idea, but the it cooled me down. Work, which is, I enjoy that There's water on the camera. Um, Let's go back to watching Mara. Like I said, distillation of what she does really well. It's raining, Biggie. We're going to have a look outside. What is it, Biggie? 
My second one would be After the Funeral by Agatha Christie. Who is it? This is the latest book in her oeuvre, I think, that I'm recommending in this. Um, Right, here we have, uh, this is a vegan carbonara. I will show you the finished product here. There is the carbonara with a side of garlic and chili shiitake mushrooms. And yeah, this is spaghetti and carbonara sauce with some peas and some mushrooms. And here is Becca's. Let's go eat. Sticky toffee pudding. And EF1. And I'm still reading this book, and it's still not very good. Hey, Biggie, what you got there? Have you got all the shopping? Oi, those are my lamb-style doner kebab slices. That's my focaccia. Get off my focaccia. No, no look, look at this. There's cat slobber on it now, Biggie. Abba, 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 abba. Do you mind? What are you doing? Are you just keeping the towels warm, are you? Is that perfectly placed? Yeah, how did you even get up there without knocking them down? Camouflaged as well. All right, uh, I, I just watched a film by myself. I put it on thinking that Becca would watch it with me and then she fell asleep. So, so that happened. Where's the cat gone? The cat has disappeared. Everyone has just left me, but um, I slept okay last night. Yesterday, uh, yesterday was a bad day. I got quite depressed, to be honest. Uh, so I drank a lot of wine and just sort of listened to music and self-destructed a little bit. I wasn't even doing any reading, so uh, so that wasn't great. But I feel a bit better today. I have had my breakfast. I had a, a vegan cooked breakfast that Becca cooked. Hey, look, it's a photo that I took. That's a photo from uh, Berlin. That was, the, that was the aeroplane on the way back when I was reading the talisman. Um, actually, I'll link to that vlog below if you haven't seen it, my Berlin vlog. What else has happened? It rained slightly earlier, which was good. I enjoyed that. Uh, I went into town, so I got my medication. Which may be one of the reasons why I was feeling depressed was because I hadn't been taking my medication. Because this is a whole saga, right? So, my doctors will only give me a month worth of medication at a time, but there's a six week waiting period between appointments. So I've had to use go private and use something called Push Doctor, which is like a mobile app, so that I can get my medication and that I don't just have to keep going cold turkey every month. But um, they sent it into a, into a pharmacy in town, so I'd not got around to picking it up. I'd been working too hard, basically. But anyway, I went to go pick that up today. While I was there, I sent a package. I sent a package to Anthony Andrews, so that'll be there soon. Shout out to Anthony, because he likes my reading vlogs as well. Hi, Anthony, you all right? Enjoy your books. Uh, what else happened? Oh, I went to Holland and Barrett, because they do a lot of vegan stuff there, so I got some uh, like vegan kebab so i'm gonna make a vegan donna kebab later but also i got some tofu sausages i got some water with uh some hemp water basically <laughs> apparently that's the thing it's quite nice and uh yeah still reading the passage i am what am i on i'm on page 580 and guys i'm so done with this book it is really dull I, I just, the, what's good, the world building is good, but the, the storyline is boring. They've managed to take a really interesting premise and, and, and give it a really boring execution. The characters just, they all blend together, they, they, they don't stand out to me at all. Um, like even their names, there's one called Elton and I've just been thinking of him as Elon because it looks a bit like Elon. And because it, it makes it slightly more fun if I pretend that Elon Musk is the character, but I don't know. I don't really get what the hype is so far with this. It's just a long book. Is that why? Because people feel like accomplished when they finish reading it, maybe? Oh, I don't know. I have slightly less than 400 pages to go. I have about 380 pages to go. I have about 30 odd pages left of my Richard Dawkins book, which I read some more of that in bed last night actually. I, only, I have like one chapter and then the end notes. So what I'm thinking about doing, because you know I said I might switch this out for Dawkins. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep reading this for now and then try and finish Dawkins 
in the evenings as I like as I have been reading it as my bedtime book and then once I've finished reading that as my bedtime book I'm gonna switch this in as my bedtime book and just read something I, that I'll enjoy so uh, so yeah anyway on that note I'm gonna go for a shower if I can get the shower working it wasn't working earlier I've seen things man you were white. Mom in this garden and my dad in this <laughs> It's raining again. And Becca needs to do the porch today. Doesn't she? What do you mean? Well, you need it's to... raining. Yeah, well, you should have done it when it wasn't raining, shouldn't you? We're watching some Romans. She's a Romanette. I think that might be Julius Caesar. Biggie. Caesar brought Crassus and Pompey together to advance his own career. Yeah, just just holding the uh, camera stand with my knees. Oh. Game of Thrones gravy. Gravy is coming. You know nothing, Bisto. Becca made a like a Sunday roast dinner. Yeah, and we watch. We learn about the Romans. Caesar. Yeah. Well, the show is called The Romans, I think. Oh, oh. Nom 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 nom. What'd you make of that, Biggie? Uh-oh. 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 He's retreating. Little tennis eyes. Look at his big eyes. <laughs> Look at him. He can't quite uh, get it. Nom nom. All right. Oh, look at me hair. It's all wet. My beard's coming on a bit, isn't it? It's actually looking like a real beard now. Never had a beard this long before. Um, let's see. Okay, let's talk about books because last time I updated you about books, I think I was talking about um, what's it? I was talking about uh, the Passage by Justin Cronin. So, yeah, I told you at the time that I was thinking about switching it out. I switched it out. So I finished reading The Blind Watchmaker by Richard Dawkins. This was probably a 3.5 or a 4 out of 5. It's kind of old now. He had references in it to like a computer program he made on this uh, 1989 Apple Macintosh, which is the year I was born. And um, so we have, I'll show you actually, I think I can show you. Blind Watchmaker, the program of the book. First published in 1986, reprinted, this edition is 1991, which is why he had that program in it. Sorry, my nose itches. There we go. That's better. And um, but yeah, I did enjoy this book. It was interesting. Like it's, it says here, the Times described it as Richard Dawkins has updated evolution, which is pretty much it. The idea is that similarly to what he did with the God delusion, he kind of takes all these arguments against evolution and just kind of debunks them. And so, for example, the idea here of the blind watchmaker is, uh, you know, something as complex as a watch needs a designer however people will compare that to things like the eye and be like how could it possibly have not been designed and he basically explains that in this how evolution and time together act as a blind watchmaker and um yeah it was really interesting i really enjoyed it actually and so yeah that was good i enjoyed that more than i enjoyed the passage anyway we've been talking about that in our emails and the other two people i read it with including mara from books like whoa None of us liked it, and none of us understand why people rave about it so much. We also all independently said that we would have uh, we would have stopped reading it. We would have DNF'd it if we hadn't been doing it for a buddy read. And I actually still, obviously, I still haven't finished it, but I will finish it in the evenings. I'm not going to totally DNF it. I'm just, I'm not excited to read it. Put it that way. And then I read. F. Scott Fitzgerald, Babylon Revisited. So I picked this up from the car boot sale in my last reading vlog, I think. And so this was only about 80 pages. Hey, Biggie. 
Hey, you're white. Right. You're gonna come and say hello. You're just gonna sit there. I think he wants his food. Oh, in case you're wondering, my, my camera is actually on the tripod at the moment. So that's why I'm not moving it around as much. Like normally I'd be holding it like this or whatever. But there's, it's, as it's on my tripod, I thought we'll just leave it there. It's fine. Uh, so this has got Babylon Revisited, the cut glass bowl and the lost decade in it. It's actually part of a longer book called Babylon Revisited, which is like a collection of 10 stories or whatever. But this was really enjoyable and it's actually made me want to read more Fitzgerald now. So I've read, um, I've read uh, The Great Gatsby. And then this is the only other thing of his that I've read, but now that I've read this and I have enjoyed it, I, I kind of want to go through the rest of his back catalogue. So I've actually added it all to my want to read on Goodreads. And I've also removed all of the Cassandra Clare books except the last two in the, uh, the Mortal Instruments series because I have those two books. So I will at least probably read them. Okay, and then next up, I'm just going to read this, the next Penguin Mini Modern for me. This is Catherine Ann Porter, The Cracked Looking Glass. I only just started it, so I can't really say too much. And then we have Neil Gaiman, Fortunately the Milk, illustrated by Chris Riddell, or Chris Riddle, I don't know. But um, yes, I will uh, be reading that one next. So those two will be what I guess I'll kickstart my next reading vlog with, and then we'll have to see where I go from there. But on that note, as it is Sunday evening, it seems like a good time to end this video, edit the last bits together, and upload it. So... On that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.